All right, so I'll start by just making a cube. It's not even a poly mesh. This is just a simple primitive. Um, I use the deformation tab. Well, first scale it up. Kind of get the shape I'm kind of looking for. Do the deformation tab, and there is a thing called taper, and it takes me a couple of tries, but I get the um, the axis I'm looking for, and taper it so it's a little bit more of a trapezoid shape. And then make a poly mesh 3D so I can sculpt on it. And then activate DynaMesh. And so now I've got 120,000 points, and I just want to go ahead and start sculpting. Um, go ahead and speed this up a minute. So basically all I want to start doing is kind of establishing some wear, some tear, um, kind of like some interesting uh, imperfections in the stone, um, kind of treating it like something that wasn't necessarily polished well, um, maybe something that was almost found. Again, just kind of working on some different shapes. don't want to rough it up too much because I'm going to be putting a design in on it. And to start the design, what I want to start using is masking. So I'm going to use a rectangular mask. And here we go. I can hold the space bar and move that so I can drag, drag it out off. I can drag it off the object and then use spacebar to move that rectangle onto the object. And here I'm just going to clean up some corners um, for where I've given it a kind of a ding. I don't want it to, to kind of create errors. And then back to the deformation tab. And I'm going to use inflate in a negative direction in order to kind of imprint um, these sides. So now I've kind of given myself a little bit of a frame. And then I'm going to go back and DynaMesh um, the object again because where I had moved those uh, points back, it was going to create stretching. So I'll re DynaMesh so that I can come back and smooth these edges down. Kind of get rid of the, um, the errors, clean some things up so it, so it looks a little more natural, a little less uh, jaggy. Now I'm going to load in an alpha, and what this will do is give me a kind of a stencil to work with, and I'm going to position it uh, just like I did the the rectangle, but instead of being solid, it has a, a mask to it. So I'm just going to place the design um, on one set of sides, and then. I'll place the design on the other set of sides because it'll mat. It's going to mask straight through the object. It doesn't matter if they're 100% accurate or not. I mean, it's not. Doesn't have to be perfectly perfect the same size. Just as long as it's close. Um, just the dyna mesh a little bit, so I can get myself a little more resolution. The uh, pattern was coming out a little uh, fuzzy. Um, in order to try to grab some more detail of my settings. So now I'm sitting at over, over well over a million points. And this should give me a much better, um, much cleaner mask than what the previous one was. And, this, and that's something you'll have to do. If, if, if the mask is coming out 
rather terribly, um, you'll need to change some things. So in this case, I was uh, that was actually another little mistake. I had left symmetry on, and so when I went to mask, it was creating some weird errors. So I went turned symmetry off, and then I was able to lay the mask out more cleanly. So, and again, the mask went straight through the model, so both sides are auto masked. Um, and now I'm just kind of changing, editing the mask a little bit, kind of going ahead and creating some spots where some errors might be. And then we go back and add the inflate again. This time in the positive direction. And all I'm wanting to do is, you know, create the, the kind of the raised area. Um, and I'm kind of looking on the side there, on that profile, to figure out how much depth I'm going to be adding. Um, kind of fine tune it in. And there we go, there's the pattern. Kind of refine the mask a little bit, hit it again. And then, of course, we're going to probably re dynamesh it one more time. Um, now, in that case, again, earlier I, I used a standard subdivision, so I just did a standard divide, not a re dynamesh because I just needed to get the numbers up, but I still need to try to hold on to performance. Now that I have the pattern in, I can go back and re dynamesh if I want to, uh, to bring it back down. Um, or at least I can lower my divisions to one and work out some of the major forms. So now I'm just going back through sculpting, adding some edge work. Um, this is where I can really ha start having fun with some with damage and wear and tear. Uh, change the material up just so I can get a better look at kind of something a little more reminiscent of stone. Again, I just keep keep working it. Trying to trying to make sure that each all four sides are a little bit different from each other. So way I can reuse it in different ways if I need to or want to. Go ahead and skip ahead to a little bit later on, towards the very end. And so now I'm just about happy with the model. Save the tool out. as a Z tool. That way I hold on to my subdivisions, hold on to the original model, and then I'm going to go to Decimation Master and pre-process. Um, because, because Decimation Master is going to change the way that the geometry is set up, um, I want to make sure I save out the Z tool first in order to hold on to um, the actual sculpted information a, a little better. So this was a 20% uh, percent reduction, or I should say an 80% reduction, and that took me down to 93,000. I didn't like that, so I uh, increased it up to 50%. Now I'm at you know over still over 200,000, and I like the, this result a lot better. It just looks cleaner. Uh, it still holds on to the detail that I'm looking for. Um, instead of exporting it out as an OBJ, uh, I decided to go for the FBX export as soon as I could grab a hold of the button. Uh, I like this because you can smooth the normals. Uh, it selects smooth normals on 
the uh, FBXX port, which I think makes for a cleaner uh, high poly mesh. So label this my, my stone high. Now for some reason once you use the FBXS export decimation master seems like it doesn't want to um, do what like re, re uh, it doesn't want to re reapply. So went ahead and did some undos back to before I decimated it. So you see I'm back up to 460,000. And so I'm going to go back and re pre process again and then set the, the K polys. So instead of a percentage, I'm doing the K polys. And this brings me down to 500, which is way too low. Um, and then so I upgrade it to 2.5, and then that gives me the, the 1250. And that gives me a much kind of nicer result. So go ahead, smooth normals, export this out as below. Next up is Maya to lay out some UVs.